Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to. Yes. You attempted suicide. Why? I was fed up. See, it's not something I can talk about now or fully because I was I was fed up. I was fed up. A lot was going on. You know, there was another group there called Black Image, uh, owned by uh, a lot of See, now the kind of politics and game that was pulled with my innocent mind. I, I didn't understand it. A lot was wrong, but the platform was wonderful. I threw myself into my career. I made use of the platform. I gave my best because that's my dream. That's my is what I've always wanted to do. So even though I left without any money, I left with my name and my talent. So your Bible said, you know, it be Irewa. You understand? Uh-huh. So what I was to that? take that book. I took from there, from him. I took that okay. in the first place. My my first exposure to television was in 1987. My father was my first manager. Then I had Oba Femila Sode in the Nezra studio. I recorded three songs with Oba Femila Sode, produced by Nelson Brown. Which one you did? Mukulu Muke. What thing will be? You understand? I did two videos in the Nezra studio. So I was already out there, but the talking from being my unique selling point was what made the entire world to say, who is this? Because I did something on Nidra, I broke a major traditional jinx. You understand? So, they said everything, whatever Mr. Sakibaway did. Honestly, I have forgiven him. Because that platform is the reason why people know me today. Okay. That platform is the reason why yes. people... You know, we have the pioneer females of in drama today. It cost me, and like people will say, there's no, 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 everything comes with a price. Perhaps what I had to endure and go through was the price I had to pay. So I like to look at it from that positive angle. All right. Before I was All really right. angry and bitter. This from the positive angle. Okay. Now, at some point, we, we, we had allegations of uh, sex and sexual harassment. And everything. Did anything like that really happen between uh, both of you? You know, a lot happened. A lot happened. But the one I want to dwell on majorly is the psychological torture. Okay. And it was, it was that was terrible. Okay. When, when you're talking about psychological torture, what specifically are you? Do you mean by that? Okay. Specifically, in Atlanta, one day in Atlanta, at the Atlanta airport. It was my first time uh, there at the Atlanta airport. Very big. I didn't know. I wanted to do number one. I wanted to uh, wee wee. I didn't know that there was a restroom just close to where we were. I went far. Before I knew it, they said I wanted to run away. Right there in the airport, the embarrassment was so much for me. No problem. We got to New York. He locked me up in a room. He didn't give me food from morning to 6 p.m. Wow. Just because he to run away. If mm. not for the fact that that only few had booked the executives of the bro of Broadway. Dr. Kibaboy had a meeting with them, um, with them, with them, um, um, even the Holy Field, you know. So they, they brought the executives of Broadway to watch our performance, and this was in um, FIR Studio in downtown Brooklyn. It was then that he came to open my door and he said to me, They now brought food. I had tried, they now brought food. So many things happened though. So many things, so many things happened. But that one I will remember for the rest of my life. It was in New Interesting. York. That, no, no, but were you really harassed sexually? Did that really happen? You know, because that was one of the stories that was trending back then. Um, Dr. Akiboboe, one thing I appreciate about him was uh, it's so cool. <laughs> at some point that start making a practice fully. Yeah, well, for me to have braiding set, I move from one grade to the other to the other. But the the my career just exploded within the year. So it was pretty really a surprise to him, to the entire team and myself as well. You know, so when I became you no know, fully sorted after I and I was traveling here and there I guess maybe it was some way of trying to hold me down, like, 
maybe if I have something with this girl, she might know, she might say. And um, there are so many things about that I wouldn't want to talk about because it's in my past now. You see, I'm deliberately avoiding certain things. There are so many things I wouldn't want to talk about. So I'll let it go. It would have been nice for you to pour out everything you know, so that the whole thing lifts your, your, your heart, your chest, and I mean, it can be free. Ah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hurt a lot of people. Not from my side, though, from his side. And I know what I'm saying. Of course, <laughs> there's no fool out there. You know, they, everybody knew that something happened. But I don't need to come and talk about it. It's gone. Okay. So what would you say was the greatest lesson, you know, that you learned from that um, painful or tortuous uh, experience? I learned so much. But one thing I learned, one thing I took from that place is that nobody can make you a star unless God makes you a star. For God will not come down. He will send people to position you. I learned to trust fully in God. Because in those moments where it was just me and my head, I, 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 I tried to have an imaginary friend that I spoke to, that I would always talk to, because I was almost going mad, you know. Um, learn to guard your mental space. We should learn to guard our mental space. It's very important. I see a lot of people breaking down, you know, left and right and stuff. They are not guarding their mental state. You allow anybody to finger your brain anyhow. They, you, they, you won't have anybody to blame you. Blame yourself. Although it's difficult to know sometimes, but God helping all of us. I learned, I, I learned to believe strongly in God. To have, it strengthened my relationship with God. Because like I said, I gave up a number of times. But on those times I gave up, God always showed up. One way or the other, God always showed up. Just at the last moment when I'm telling myself, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep. I'm going to overdose. I'm done. You know, something will just come up miraculously that will ignite my faith and passion and hope to go ahead, to forge ahead, you know. So, with, for me, oh, for me, living that place alive and still being where I am today can only be God, nothing else. Because a lot, a lot went down. Yeah. 